give the gift of Rev Voice this Christmas. Rejoice with Rev Voice when you sign up and enter to win 12 days of giveaways, including a 2015 Jeep Wrangler from Bahamas Bus and Truck. Hubert Ingram speaks out on Ryan Pender's resignation. The Prime Minister weighs in on the United States' new Cuba policy, plus the National Security Minister talks national intelligence. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram slammed Prime Minister Perry Christie today for defending Ryan Pinder's resignation and asserted it is unbelievable that Pinder would quit his job as Financial Services Minister to work in that very sector. It's the first time Ingram has spoken publicly on a national issue in nearly two years. I am known for a word. That word hasn't changed. Unbelievable. Good morning. Thank you. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram says he finds it unbelievable that Ryan Pinder would quit his job as financial services minister to take up a job in the financial services sector. However, Ingram says what is even more unbelievable is that Christie would actually defend Pinder's resignation after criticizing former tourism minister Vincent Vanderpool Wallace in 2012. Well, the only yardstick I have is Mr. Perry Christie's yardstick. He was very critical of Mr. Vincent van der Poel Wallace, who was a former Minister of Tourism, who was booted out of office, and who is a professional, and who accepted an engagement as a consultant with the Mayor Guana Group. Um, Mr. Christie was very critical about that. Now, how that squares with a minister for responsibility for a specific portfolio, walking out one day, and the next day, being employed in that sector, it's not a matter. So I think it's Mr. Christie need to ask the question, not me. Prime Minister Christie acknowledged that Pinder has taken a big hit since his resignation was announced, but denied any suggestion that he feathered his nest during his time as financial services minister. Well, if he was in a regulatory position, I would have been able to understood the criticism. He was in a promotional position. If those same people who speak would be able to tell me why my friend, for example, who whilst he was a cabinet minister had the portfolio responsibility for Meguana and immediately after the government lost, for the FNM government lost, he became the consultant for the group. The same people don't write about it, they don't speak about it, they seem to have a, a renewed energy when it comes to Ryan Pinder. However, Ingram fired back, pointing out that the FNM was no longer in office and Vanderpool Wallace was unemployed when he took up the consultancy job. On the campaign trail in April 2012, Ingram noted that Christie provided legal advice to Bahamas Petroleum Company after the PLP lost the 2007 general election. However, Christie maintains his position on Ryan Pender, telling reporters today that up to 30 companies both here and abroad have tried to hire Pender because he has a great understanding of the financial services industry and regulatory parts of it. I would never, for example, have been a part of Ryan's exit um, from cabinet government if I thought he was using it um, to, to, as leverage um, to get himself an important position. And it's a regulatory part of it, right? the one that Alison Gibson deals with as Attorney General, for example, that is the one that you may say you might do favors for people. But I mean, if you look at the record and you look at what he would have been saying, what he would have been doing, it's very difficult to say that he has been feathering his nest or the nest of the people he's going to work for. It is what it is. Christie says he plans to announce Pinder's replacement very soon. Following the Obama administration's announcement on a major loosening of travel and economic restrictions on Cuba and plans to reestablish diplomatic relations between the United States and Cuba, Prime Minister Christie said today, while this ought to be a serious concern for the Bahamas, government is working to reduce crime and increase investment to ensure Cuba does not pose a threat. 
it ought to be a serious concern for the Bahamas. When I was, maybe you would now understand why I have not taken a day off and I'm driving the investment portfolio. We have over the next few months major announcements to make about additional investments in the country. Um, you know, you, when you look at the rating agencies like Standard & Poor's, you will see that they are anticipating certain things. And um, the opposition must, must now recognize that the economy is not going to be a subject of debate for the next general election. And so they better focus on, on my efforts to solve the crime problem. Christie says Cuba has always been an extraordinary destination that has intrigued travelers, but insisted this new policy will strengthen relations between the Bahamas and Cuba. Meantime, former Prime Minister Ingram noted that the major overhaul in the United States policy toward Cuba will have implications for the Bahamas. It's always supported um, Cuba's right to be recognized by America and be treated like every other nation in the world. And so the Bahamas should be happy that the United States is now coming around to that, that reality. But there's no question it'll have some implications for the Bahamas, and the Bahamas must now begin to give renewed focus to how it will compete um, in this expanded market for the American tourists. Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkom says while there is a need for the Bahamas to improve its product, this country has nothing to worry about. The Bahamas is not Cuba and Cuba is not the Bahamas. So uh, I don't think we have to worry about Cuba. What we have to do is worry about ourselves. I think, um, as I've said before, we should never worry about the competition, let the competition worry about us. But it all is predicated upon what we do. We have to better our product. A U.S. contractor held by the Cuban government since 2009 was free today. Additionally, the U.S. and Cuba are set to reopen embassies as they seek to normalize relations. In other news, long-awaited legislation for the National Intelligence Agency will not reach Parliament until next year. Members of the opposition demanded that government table that bill after the operations of that agency were brought into question earlier this year. In the final sitting of the House of Assembly for 2014, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nodded said the bill has been prepared, but he is not yet ready to present it. Dana Smith reports. It was in the House of Assembly last week that Long Island MP Loretta Butler Turner again sounded the alarm on allegations of domestic spying by the National Intelligence Agency. Nottage, who had promised the legislation would be tabled and passed in the House of Assembly before the end of the year, said today the bill is still under review by the Attorney General. It was my intention to table it today. The Attorney General yesterday indicated that um, she wanted to have a, a look at some things in it and so what we've decided to do was not to lay it today but we will distribute it to members of parliament during the recess once she has um, completed a review. As for what exactly has to be reviewed by the attorney general, the national security minister said you, you would have to ask her. The NIA legislation is designed to prevent the emergence of any new threats, Nottage has said in the past. Its purpose is to be the eyes and ears of the country, not only locally but also regionally and internationally. According to Nottage, government hopes the agency will deter threats to the country's national security, including drug and firearm trafficking, illegal poaching and migration, corruption and crime. The minister said today after working on the legislation for more than a year, government is satisfied with the final product. We in the Ministry of National Security have worked with the um, lawyers from the Attorney General's office for more than a year on the National Intelligence Bill. We are satisfied now with the product that we have. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. Former head of the National Advisory Council on Crime, Bishop Simeon Hall, is speaking out on the electronic monitoring program, asserting that if government isn't willing to address the program's flaws, officials should get rid of it. Jasmine Brown tells us more. Despite pushing for the implementation of the ankle bracelet monitoring system when he was chair of the Crime Commission, Bishop Hall insists that system should now be placed under review. A number of incidents involving people wearing ankle bracelets have cast doubt on the ankle monitoring system. 
Most recently, a man wearing an ankle bracelet was murdered last weekend. The week before, another man wearing an ankle bracelet was taken into custody for questioning. Hall says it's repeated incidents like this that prove the electronic monitoring program has turned out to be an embarrassment. In a 2010 report, the council recommended ankle bracelets be used to monitor offenders. I was the chairman of the last crime commission. I'm ashamed of the fact that uh, I thought our greatest uh, uh, suggestion was the ankle bracelet. But that is shameful, the way criminals can abuse them, how people are committing murder with ankle bracelets on. What kind of folly is this? Last year, Hall told our news team that he does not think the program should be stopped. Instead, he said it should be overhauled and made foolproof against crafty criminals. He added that he has no issue with ICS continuing to run the program. Today, he had different views on the issue. I think government needs to review the ankle bracelet. Now, you know, it, it would be a generalization to say that because I want to believe that uh, most persons with ankle bracelets are being monitored. But it seems an affront to the monitoring system that people could do these egregious acts and wearing ankle bracelets. He added that if the program cannot be successfully reviewed, the government should put an end to it. It should be cancelled. should be cancelled. Hall says crime is simply out of control and money should be spent on effective measures, not on initiatives that are not yielding the right results. And I say all of that out of the spirit of this crime is a national priority. Meantime, ICS Security Concepts is still operating the program on an extended contract. That contract expired in November 2013. It was extended to facilitate the government's request for a proposal process. Minister of National Security Bernard Nottage has said several companies have expressed interest in manning the program. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. Still to come on NB12, why workers protested outside water and sewerage today. The details are after this break.